Today we're going to be going through the best settings for the MSI MAG272 QP X50. This is their 500Hz QD OLED monitor. We've got a full review of this screen linked in the description below, but we're going to go through the best settings now for SDR and HDR. We'll have a look at the gaming settings, the OLED care settings, and you can use these from a PC connection or indeed any other device like a games console or whatever else you might have connected to the screen. We've got the screen at its default settings and we'll start by having a quick look at the OLED care features. So there's a whole section in the menu here for MSI OLED care. You'll see that most of these features are turned on by default. Now you want to leave as many of them turned on as possible to help with the mitigation of image retention. But if you find any of them problematic, you can disable them here. One of them that you can't disable is the pixel shift option, unfortunately, but you could turn that down to slow if you find that distracting. The others are all available elsewhere, so have a look at those. If you find any of them problematic during your usage or distracting, you can disable them, but we'd recommend just leaving them on if possible. Quickly in the settings menu as well, there's a couple of other things you might want to have a look at. So you can turn the HDMI CEC feature on here. That's quite useful. That will automatically switch over to the HDMI input when it detects a device is powered on. That's quite useful if you've got a games console connected or something. You can also enable the USB Type-C power delivery charge function there as well. And if you want, you can turn off the power LED at the bottom here as well. So let's start by setting the screen up in SDR mode. So the first thing we need to do is select a preset mode. Now you'll see there's a load of preset modes in the game mode menu here. And then there's also a load of other options in the professional menu in the pro mode section. Now these could just as easily all be in one long menu. They've just been split up here into two different sections, but whichever mode you activate most recently, that'll be the one that's active. So it doesn't matter if you set this to, let's say, anti-blue, and then you go into gaming. If you then choose the user mode, the user mode will be what's active. It doesn't matter that this is still showing as anti-blue. It's whichever the most recent is. So for this, we're going to use the pro mode presets, and we're going to configure the user preset mode. Now that operates with the full native wide gamma of the panel. That will give you a more saturated and vivid looking image, probably preferable for gaming and multimedia. And we expect most people will prefer that kind of image. There are some other options you'll see down the bottom of the menu here for emulation of different color spaces. So we'll come back and have a look at those in a moment. So if you're happy to use the full native wide gamma, we'll select user mode here. And then back in the image section, we're going to adjust the brightness down to a setting of 29. That will give us a luminance of around 120 nits. Now you can set this to whatever you like, whatever you feel is comfortable for your preferences, your ambient light conditions. A couple of other options you might wanna try would be a setting of 38 for 150 nits or 54 for 200 nits. But like I say, just set this at whatever you find comfortable. We'll go with 29 for now, just to give us a 120 nits luminance. Contrast can stay on 70, that's fine. Sharpness, leave that on zero. Color temperature, we're going to move out of the normal mode and into the customization option. Now you see that the screen initially goes quite noticeably darker, and that's because all of these channels are turned down to 50 by default. So we're gonna start by bumping all of these up to 100 as a starting point. That will return us a similar image to the default mode. And then we'll make the adjustments to red, move that down to 95. Green, move that down to 97, and we'll leave blue on 100. So 95, 97, 100. That will return your white point very close to D65, 6,500 Kelvin, and that gives you a better white point than the default normal mode. To go along with this user preset mode and the settings we've just set, if you want to try out our calibrated ICC profile, that's available and linked in the description below. That will clamp the native wide color space back to the sRGB reference space for color aware applications. So that's a good way of taming the very wide color gamut for SDR applications and sRGB content. The other option, if you don't want to use the ICC profile and you want to clamp to sRGB all the time, would be to come back into the pro mode menu and just use the sRGB preset mode. Now that clamps the color space back to sRGB. You've also got options for Adobe RGB or Display P3 if you want to work specifically with either of those color spaces. sRGB is the color space that's used for SDR applications, so if you find the default user mode too vivid, too saturated, too colorful, then the sRGB mode will give you a more neutral color for SDR content. You'll see that a lot of the settings in the image menu are now grayed out when using the sRGB preset mode. We can't change the color temperature or the contrast. We can change the brightness. So again, we're gonna move this down to 29 to give us 120 nits, or you could set it at 38 for 150 nits or 54 for 200 nits. Again, set that at whatever you find comfortable. 
So there's an option there between whether you want to use the sRGB clamp mode all the time or the user mode and potentially combine that with our calibrated ICC profile. We'll just go through the gaming settings as well quickly. So there's a couple of options in the GI, the gaming intelligence menu. You can have a play around with the crosshair, the optic scope if you want. The main things we'll look at are in the main gaming section. So the night vision mode is quite useful for increasing the detail near black and in darker gaming scenes. So you can have a play around with that. The normal mode, maybe the AI mode, they're probably the most useful, but this will be down to user taste and it depends on the game you're playing. So have a play around if you want. The MPRT mode, the blur reduction, the BFI, black frame insertion mode, that can be enabled here if you want. Just keep in mind that that will automatically disable adaptive sync. So if you want to then disable MPRT and return to normal VRR situations, you'll have to come back and re-enable adaptive sync afterwards. The other main setting that you'll need to change if you're connecting a console we found is to switch the HDMI 2.1 mode from PC to console. Otherwise we found some of the settings were not available like for instance 4K mode, virtual 4K support, that didn't seem to work when it was set on the PC input so just switch that to console if you're connecting an external console to the screen over HDMI. We'll configure the screen for HDR now as well. So we've enabled HDR in Windows. You'll see the screen automatically switches over to its HDR mode. As a reminder, we'd recommend only enabling Windows HDR when you're going to view actual HDR content. Otherwise it can lead to all kinds of problems and issues. But we've enabled that here so that we can set up the HDR mode. You'll see there's a more restricted list of game mode presets and professional mode presets now in this mode. We're gonna leave this on the user option for the full native color space. And then in the image menu, you'll see that some of the other settings, brightness, color temperature, they're now not available. The only setting we really want to look at here is the display HDR setting. You'll see there's three options available, True Black 500, Peak 1000, and their new EOTF boost mode. Now the True Black 500 mode gives you the most accurate EOTF tracking, the Peak 1000 mode, as is quite normal on QD OLED monitors, ends up looking darker than the True Black 500 mode, despite being able to reach up to higher peak highlights. But we think most people will prefer to use the EOTF boost mode. The EOTF boost mode gives you the best of both worlds, really. It gives you better EOTF tracking and avoids the over dimming that you'll see in the Peak 1000 nits mode. So it retains its brightness relative to the True Black 500 mode, but is also able to reach up to the higher peak brightness capabilities of the panel as well. So that's a pretty good solution. And we think overall, most people will prefer to use that option. By all means, experiment with the three modes if you like, but EOTF boost seems to be the best of both worlds in our testing. So there you go, that's the screen set up for both SDR and HDR usage. Do check out our review linked in the description below. And if you found this video useful, please just give us a quick like, that would be really appreciated. Thank you for watching, we'll catch you next time.